Welcome back to Wall Street Training's Advanced Financial Model, Building the Core Model. You have thus far already completed as much as you can on the income statement as well as the balance sheet, the first pass. Now, let's focus our attention on the cash flow let's statement. Let's take a look at common stock dividends. Common stock dividends will be done as follows. Let's actually scroll down to our dividends estimate. And I want you to get to I-41. In cell I-41, let's input the dividends per share that we will estimate that they will pay in 2006. Let's just assume that it's 67 cents. Now, what is the justification for that 67 cents? Please go back to your page 26 on your 10K filing. You want to look for page 26 and actually uh, to the uh, one page up or one page left if you're on a two page spread to the left of page 26 and I want you to find a section that talks about common stock dividends. And that common stock dividends will say as follows. We pay dividends totaling 2.5 billion or 60 cents per share in fiscal 06. Blah, 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 blah. On March, blah, 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 blah. The company's BOD board of directors approved an increase in annual dividends to 67 cents per share. 67 cents per share. And for us, that is the justification that we need to estimate what we think that number will be, 67 cents, quite indeed, that is the number that we are going to use. Now, one trick here is to figure out the following. What is my dividends per share growth rate? Well, our dividends per share growth rate, we're going to have to estimate. For that, I would like you to now go to the historical tab, the first tab. But before you start hitting control page up once, twice, three times, let me show you another keyboard shortcut. Please hit control shift less than sign. Again, control shift less than sign will direct you to the very first tab of the file. How do you remember control shift less than sign? Because the left than, left, excuse me, the less than sign points to the left. And of course, if you were to hit control shift, let's just do this real quick. Control shift greater than sign will point to the very last tab because it points to the right. Let's say you have a huge colossal file with multiple tabs you want to get somewhere in the middle. Well, since there's nothing between control shift less than and, sh and right greater than sign, you can hit the question mark. So hit control shift question mark will jump you to the middle of the file. How do you remember those shortcut keys? Again, you will go to our menu items on top, Wall Street Training, Alt S, W for worksheet, and there you go. Go to first worksheet, last, and middle. You can also select all worksheets. There's no keyboard shortcut for that. Now, we will go to our historical tab, control shift, less than sign, pointing to the left. And let's take a look again at row 20. Your row 20, I'm not going to zoom in on this, your row 20, you can see as well, this is your dividend growth historically. And what we are now trying to say is the following. It seems as if the average of all of the growth rates, the average of the growth rates have been 20% over the last 10 to 11 years. In addition, if you direct yourself to row 12, the dividend dollars, the actual dividends per share, the CAGR, compound annual growth rate, for more information on a compound annual growth rate, please refer to our intro to finance, our finance 101 module in which we talk about CAGRs and the basics of valuation and finance. So in any case, aside from that shameless self-advertising, we can clearly try to make an estimate and say that our dividends growth rate is going to be 20%. But I'm going to make an executive decision not to use that. I'm going to say 15%, and I'll tell you why. Here's my subjective judgment call. The last year, growth rate was 15%. The previous year was a pretty nice pop, 44%. So therefore, number one, I'm going to say I want to use the last year approximate. Why? I don't believe that Walmart in the near future will want or will want to, or they probably can, but I don't think they want to sustain that 20% growth rate because they are heavily investing into their business. Their available cash flow will probably not be as high. So I'm going to take the conservative route and say, let's use 15%, like it or not. Of course, you can apply your own subjective assumptions in there as well. So I want you to go back to your cash flow statement, control shift, pay, uh, sorry, control page down once, twice, three times, and now go to cell J42. In cell J42, I would like you to hard code of 15%. J42, type in 15%. I want you to go to K42 and say equals left arrow equals J42. 
This way, if I decide to change this 15% in D2 to 20%, once again, it will update in every year. Take this black K42, 15% in black, shift right to M, 2010, M42, control R. Then I want you to go back to J41 and say equals, left arrow, I41, times, open parentheses, 1 plus J42, you're going to grow that 67 cents by 15%, double tap enter. Take this 77 cents, as I'm sure you figured out what to do by now, shift right arrow to 2010, control R, and now you filled in your dividends per share estimate. What I would like you to do is as follows. We now have estimated the dividends per share for the next five years, but we need to figure out what our basic shares outstanding is. Well, we can't really figure out what our basic shares outstanding, by the way, real quick, why is it that when we're using dividends, we're using basic shares? Normally, we always like to use diluted because we want to take the full conservative effect. We want to use diluted shares. Why is it that for basic, for dividends, we'll use basic? Well, very simply, you only pay dividends on shares that have been actually issued. Because you're only paying dividends on shares that have been actually issued, you will only use the basic number. However, at this point, we cannot figure out our projected future basic shares outstanding. Why not? because we have not yet done our share repurchase calculation, which is what we'll do in about three seconds. So, what I would first like you to do actually is go to cell H44, and I want you to input the actual latest basic shares outstanding from the 10K filing. So flip back to your 10K filing, go to the very first page, or technically the third page, and then I want you to find me the latest number of basic shares outstanding that Walmart has disclosed to us. And that, in, the, in this case here, will be 4167-233-525, as of March 20th, 2006. So, again, in the very front of your filing, the third page, really around the first or second page, we want to grab this big number on your screen, 4167-233-525. Actually, wouldn't it be nice if there was a dollar sign in front and that's your net worth? Pretty nice. Just make sure it's in U.S. dollars. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put that number in cell H44. Again, please make sure you do not round. H44, 4167.233525. Again, please make sure you do not round and do not actually transpose or have a typo. We will now leave this dividend numbers, dividend section as is, and let's go ahead and look at our share we purchase.